How's it going guys? It is 1.53 a.m. 7th of December, Wednesday here in Japan. We have a medium difficulty question for biochemistry for step one. This seems very nitpicky. However, they love these details on the NBME exams. So I'll tell you exactly what you need to know without wasting your time. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical. MEHL man underscore medical. The link's down below. Find me on Telegram. The link's to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. So 12-year-old boy, one-hour history, difficulty breathing. Symptoms do not resolve after albuterol, beta-2 agonist. However, after IV methylprednisolone, corticosteroid, symptoms resolve. Question wants to know the most likely explanation for his improvement. Okay, so let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice E. Go backwards. Choice E, bind to G protein, stimulates phospholinositar turnover. Wrong fucking answer. This refers to G alpha Q. Okay, so we're going to get production of IP3. They want you to know that this is the answer on NBME exam for oxytocin. So oxytocin agonizes G alpha Q, G proteins, and causes phospholinositar turnover. Okay, produces IP3. Also refers to have one or three MMs, the mnemonic. Anything that agonizes H1, alpha 1, vasopressin 1, muscarinic 1, muscarinic 3, okay? I mean, that would be G alpha Q. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, binding to G protein, stimulation of adenylocyclase, wrong answer. This refers to G alpha S, okay? This would be albuterol, okay? Beta 2 agonism, beta 1 as well. Could refer to vasopressin 2, dopamine 2, histamine 2. Okay, I mean, there's a lot we could chat about. It's a pass fail exam. You want to memorize your G proteins, that's fine. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, G protein, innovation of adenylocyclase, wrong answer. It's G alpha I. Okay, so, I mean, MAD 2s, anything that agonizes muscarinic 2, alpha 2, delta 2 or dopamine too, I should say. So, I mean, that's G-alpha I, all right? You could be aware of, you know, nitpicky stuff or microbiology if we want to get tangential, such as uh, pertussis toxin inhibiting G-alpha I, holy shit, so we get an increase in CAMP, right? So, I mean, there's stuff we can talk about on that front. Point is, it's the wrong fucking answer. Choice B, Binding to cytosolic receptor, translocation of the nucleus, activation target genes, correct answer. So your high-yield factoid here that I prefaced with sounds nitpicky, but they really like on the NBME content is steroid hormones. Okay, They bind to intracytoplasmic, intracytosolic receptors, followed by translocation of the nucleus, and then upregulation of gene transcription. So it could be any steroid, testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, cortisol, aldosterone, okay? I mean, these are all steroid hormones. I mean, you've got methylprednisolone, it's a corticosteroid. So same thing as prednisone, right? Hydrocortisone. So these are all corticosteroids and that's what they're gonna do. That's why they take some time to act. So you give a steroid, it's not gonna work right away. And that's because it requires binding to a cytosolic receptor, translocation of the nucleus, genes have to be transcribed. Whereas albuterol, for example, works instantly because beta-2 agonism, uh, G-alpha-S activation, this is just going to lead to effects right away. We don't have this whole cascade with gene transcription that's necessary, okay? So the, not only that factoid in isolation, the way they're going to ask this on U.S. Amelie is they could give you some arcane uh, research style question where they say a researcher is investigating hormone X that binds to a cell membrane binding site. And you're like, I have no fucking idea what's going on. It's like, all right, well, they tell you that it binds to a cell membrane binding site and they wanna know what it is. And you look at the answer choices and you see prolactin, you see testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, aldosterone there. And you're like, well, prolactin's the only one that's not a steroid hormone, right? It's a peptide hormone. So you could infer and you'd be like, well, the steroid hormones are going to bind a cytosolic receptor, and they're talking about a plasma membrane receptor. That's going to be prolactin then, you know? That's what it's going to be. That's how they ask it on USMLE. So real quick, jack stat tyrosine kinase, wrong fucking answer. This actually refers to prolactin and growth hormone. It's nonsense. In fact, in fact, interestingly, if you know too much, 
you risk uh, getting questions wrong because as I just fucking said, prolactin growth hormone, uh, they act through jackstat tires and kinases. There is a sneaky fucking question, an audacious fucking question on one of the NBME exams where they tell you uh, something with growth hormone, okay? And they say uh, there's some sort of cancer, some sort of abnormal process that leads to G-alpha S activation, which we said before is uh, adenylocyclase, okay? But growth hormone is technically jack stat tyrosine kinase. So it's weird. If It's like if you knew the factoid that growth hormone acts through jack stat, but in that one question they give, they actually want G alpha S uh, adenylocyclase because they mentioned G alpha S. They want adenylocyclase in that question. I articulate that right now because you should at least be aware of it because you're going to see it on the NBME exams when you get there. All right. So point of consolidation, steroid hormones bind to cytosolic receptors. Thyroid hormone, T3, T4, you need to know bind to nuclear receptors. You know the deal. Make you make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.